Making a template for a data figure is quite easy. This video is going to help explain to you how. Like this video if you want to support me. Do not skip this video. To make a data figure, you must stick to the instructions and specifications of a target journal. And it is a good habit to have a one-stop template and one flow you'll use for all your future figures so you don't repeat yourself. Today, we'll use the free Inkscape version 1.3 to create a figure template for the nature of family of journals. Thank you to Inkscape. I am using their free software to make this video possible. Visit their website, linked below, to get a copy. Install like any other software and you're good to go. Thanks Inkscape. I have my one already, so I'm gonna open it so we start. We are going to use lots of layers to hold different aspects of the template. If we look down below on the left, we see we have one layer. We'll scroll up and go to Layer, Layers and Objects. And it brings up the Layers dialog over on the right. Right click on Layer 1, go to Rename Layer, and give it a name of your choice. I'm going to name my one specifications and instructions. When done, select Rename to commit. On this layer, I will type a heading and the specifications and instructions of a target journal, in this case Nature. I have done my one and show it here. I'm going to centralize the page a little bit to describe to you what you see on the left. Now, this area is the pasteboard area that does not get printed. Below, you have a summary of things I've taken from the page of Nature. For example, you see a one column figure is 89 millimeters, two column width is 180, and color format RGB, and we have the text sizes. Next, I usually add a color scheme I intend to use. If you are in a new lab or working for a client, it is useful to ask what color schemes they use. And finally below, I have a reference section of the information I have above. Next, I will add a new layer by clicking on this plus sign in the Layers dialog. And we see we can add a new layer above the current layer. I will name it two column width and add the width 180 millimeters. When done, I'll select add to commit. Now we aim at creating a box that will show us the real estate we have for creating a two column figure. To create such a guiding box, I'm gonna use the margin tool to guide me. For that, I will scroll down here to the page tool and activate. Up here, we see this feature called margins. Now, a full page is 210 millimeters. We are choosing millimeters because we are going for nature. We want to have a drawing space of 183 millimeters. So I type in 13.5, add the units and hit enter. We'll see this little blue line around the page. We can click and drag it with a handle when making our figure to define what height we want. This will straight off be useful if we are making this template only for a two column figure. Now we want to draw guiding boxes using this margin as guide. For that, I go up on the right and make sure I toggle on snapping. For now, I wish to go to the rulers, click on the ruler and drag guidelines to snap at the start and the end of this margin. I will also go to the top ruler, click on it and drag guidelines to snap at the top and the bottom of the margin. Next, I will select the pen obesier tool and come up here to the inner section until I see a prompt. Pressing down the control key 
I'm going to sequentially click around the corners of the margin to form a box. Now, note that we could have also created a box by using the rectangle tool to draw a box, removing the fill and adjusting the stroke width. To get rid of guidelines, press S to switch to the selection tool and press on anywhere on the board to deselect and you can simply grab the guidelines and pull them back to the ruler. I'm gonna take Ctrl Z to undo. One way of making the guides disappear is simply to click on any of the rulers. This way, you are able to see what you are doing and you can call back the guidelines if needed by clicking on the ruler. Now that you have two layers, you can differentially see what is on a layer by closing or opening this eye symbol on the right. Toggling the eye symbol on and off, the content of the layer disappears. So, if we toggle the first layer, we see the text disappears. On the right, we have locks you can use to lock a layer. A locked layer can no longer be accessed. Now, go back to the right and also lock up layer 2. This way, we can access any of the layers. Now, we want to create a new layer holding a guiding box for a 136mm column figure. We are going to use the same procedure like before by coming to the plus sign and adding a box. Alternatively, we can go up here to layer, add layer, and we see we can also name a layer. This is going to sit above the current layer. So it is important that the upper box is selected. You know it is selected when it is highlighted like so. I'm gonna name this layer 1.5 column figure, 136 millimeters. When done, I select Add to commit. Like before, we are going to come down here and click on the page tool. And we have to enter the value of the margin up here. Now again, a full page is 210 millimeters. Take away 136 and we have 74. Divide this by 2 and we have 37. So I'm going to enter 37 millimeters and hit enter. Now we see we have a new margin with guides which we can use to draw our box. Now if you want, you can grab this handle and pull up to have the height you want. But for aesthetics, I usually leave the box like so and later, if I need to draw a figure, I then pull the lower part to have the height I need to have. Next, go and choose the selection tool and click on the ruler to toggle the guides back. Then pull the guides one by one from the left and from the right to sit at the margin. Repeat the same for the top and for the bottom. Like before, go to the left and choose the pen tool. Come to the intersection until you see a prompt. Click on it, hold down the control key and sequentially click at the corners to form a box. Now, if you click at the last, you may have this thread hanging up. You just need to click again on it or double click each time you are at that end to make sure you finish the box. I'm gonna press on S to switch to the selection tool and we see our box is selected. To see the box, click on the ruler to take the guides away. Click on any part of the page and here we have our box. While using, if we need the length to be longer, we can simply click on it and pull it down. I click on an empty part of the page to deselect. Now we are going to use the same procedure to create the next and all other boxes. To spare your time, I'll do that for you. 
After adding the last box, click on the selection tool, go to the right and toggle on the eye symbol to see that the guiding margin is still available. We need to get rid of this margin. To get rid of the margin, scroll down to the page 2 on the left, then scroll up to the margin window and set the margin to 0. When done, hit enter. Now choose the selection tool back and you notice you have no margin. Toggle back the eye symbol to see your guide for a one column figure. If you may have noticed, I've gone ahead and written the labels for each of the guides. Now this is how easy it is to create a template for a data figure. Like the video. Send this video to your friend. A new video drops soon on how we can use this template to create a data figure.